<laughs> well, it's a further clarification to my last video. Let me point out that uh, I've, co I've gotten a few responses from people who seem to think that I'm now endorsing a kind of right-wing view emanating from um, Rush Limbaugh or Glenn Beck or whatever, you know. Um, that is not at all my intention on here. As a matter of fact, um, I'm, uh, I consider myself to be uh, basically um, a liberal and a progressive. Uh, only my own party is not supporting my viewpoints anymore. So, uh, consequently, I left the party because they're not representing me nor anyone else in this country. What I want to point out here is my criticism coming, basically, from another perspective, not some lunatic right-wing fringe perspective, which regards, you know, Obama as a, I don't, I don't know, somebody coming from outer space. Uh, you know, for all I care, I don't care whether Obama is black, white, green, or yellow. It doesn't matter. What I care about is not his statements, but his policies. What he's actually doing while he is in office. What is, what is he supporting and what his promises were and where we are headed. So, I will quote some article here uh, by Chris Floyd. Recently, Chris Floyd says, I wrote uh, of the counterinsurgency doctrine so beloved by the Pentagon and now eagerly embraced by the Obama administration. A reader took me to task for this uh, inflammatory comment that I made and saying that eagerly embraced statement is certainly hard to square with the Pentagon's annoyance and Cheney's charge of dithering. Its inaccuracy suggests a deliberate inaccuracy or lying on your part, to which this reply uh, is brief by Chris Floyd. I realize that uh, historical memory has always been a rare commodity in the United States. And one shudders to see that the onset of this chronic amnesia is now down to the merest months. Was it not just six months ago in May of 2009 that Obama made a great show of firing the commander in Afghanistan and replacing him with a much lauded expert in counterinsurgency General Stanley McChrystal, a close associate of the much lauded architect of the counterinsurgency in Iraq, General Petraeus. The Bush appointed officer, by the way, whom Obama has retained as one of his advisors to his day. He's also championed by Robert Gates, another Bush appointee, which is retained by the Obama administration. The fact that Obama has not signed off on the increasing uh, request for a troop surge about McChrystal says absolutely nothing. It doesn't mean that he's not going to do it. So what if the Pentagon is annoyed with Obama or if Dick Cheney is critical of the faction that ousted his own faction from power? Do you think that factions in regimes of every stripe don't have very fierce and nasty internal battles, even when they embrace the same policies overall? Have you ever read any history of the inner workings of the Nazi regime or the Bolsheviks or the Roman Empire? 
or Lincoln's cabinet for that matter. You know, somebody can always draw their conclusions from the New York Times latest headlines. Pentagon annoyed at not immediately get it, getting its own. Or even gasped. Cheney slams Obama. If these dog bites men, sun rises in the east kind of stories inform your world view, then you're welcome to it. See how that'll work out for you. As for judgments clouded with emotions, let me say in all candor that I honestly don't give one goddamn bit whether somebody thinks that my writing on these issues is clouded by emotion or not. I mean, Jesus Herbert Walker Christ, we're talking about arms and legs and of heads being ripped off from the bodies of women and children. Actual human beings, you know, being slaughtered in our names day after day. And for what purpose? For what purpose? A pipeline going through Afghanistan to ensure our creditworthy existence here in the United States. Nowadays the Taliban is stronger, the drug trade has ranched it up, and our entire policy in this regard is a complete joke. So yes, when I write about this atrocious or obscene situation, there is a bit of emotion. But I, but I guess you're right, it isn't good if what you want to do is to be taken seriously by the establishment which runs the country. I don't give a damn about that. Not in the slightest. I write about things and I talk about things for one reason only. To bear witness to put it down for the record that I see evil being committed when I see it. That's all I want to do. I'm not saying there aren't any other worthwhile efforts, effective approaches and so on, to confronting the horrific reality of war, including dispassionate accounts in your major mainstream news. That's all nice and fine, you know. But it isn't going to change anything. As a conclusion to his article, the most important question in this regard is not whether or uh, is not, is not whether or not something is written with emotion, because that's basically unavoidable, whether you want to admit to it or not. The real question is whether or not that emotion is informed by facts or fiction. I hope to God I never write or say anything about atrocities, murder and corruption, and brutality without some tinge of emotion in it.
because if there isn't any emotion in it then you know who the hell cares who who the hell cares about the horrors Ooh.